Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hair Tube. You may remember Susan. She's here to join us again today. Hair's grown back a lot and we're going to actually um, lighten her uh, hair today using highlights. And we're using a new product by Matrix called Curl Lights, which will be fun. Obviously designed for curly hair um, to manage the condition throughout the lightening process. And then we've decided to um, tone the hair using some red copper. Be fun when going into winter, so we're going to get some warming up. And Susan said to me that she wants to try a more modern sort of layered look. Some guys call it shag sort of layers. Don't know that we're going to go real hard in the, in the front because I think that given that um, we've got quite a strong, uh, how would you call it, cowlick in the hairline, that could be a little bit problematic. But we're going to have some fun with the layering the haircut today. You excited? Very excited. You're a bit cold. No, I'm just super excited. Oh, excited. I, I'm excited too because Susan's very adventurous and um, she just lets me do whatever I like. Well, you are the king, so... Thanks. We have um, a lot of highlights to put in today, so I'm going to not talk so much in the intro. We need to get started. So we're going to start with lightening the hair and then once we lighten it out, I'm going to try and get... I think the target um, level for the toner is a six. So if I can get it to like a level seven or eight, I'm not really concerned about having warmth in there because obviously we're going into a warm tone, but if we were lightening and wanted to be blonde, that would be a different process. So we don't need to lighten it for too long, but we've got to make sure we get it above that level six. We're going to do a full head section. So I'm going to get out the back. I'm going to mix up this new uh, Curl Lights product and let's see how it goes. Ready? Ready. Cool, we'll get started. I mixed up my Curl Lights liner. It's actually uh, quite a nice, almost looks like icing on a cake. That's sort of like the consistency it looks and feels. So. Looking forward to trying that. What we want to do is we want to create like a, an even sort of hue across the whole head rather than sort of individual highlighted pieces. So I'm going to use a basic foiling section. We've got it here into uh, equal parts and we're just going to do horizontal as I come into the back. And then as we get to the top, we want to make sure that we fall right into the regrowth. So when her hair is falling, you have like the nice highlighted um, pieces coming straight over like a veil. So I'm going to start in the back. I'm not going to bore you with uh, watching me foil. We might just time lapse it a little bit. In a cold night, the emptiness haunted me. I saw a light, but it was too dark for me. And I fell hard I guess I'm falling For you girl I can reach the stars Okay, foils are in We're going to process that I'm going to put under heat And um, when we come back we're going to apply the um, overall colour. So see you guys soon. You gave me warmth when no one did. The lightning is done. And you can see that through the slices that I took while lightening it, we've managed to get a beautiful, even representation of where that um, nice red copper that we're going to put in is going to be. Speaking of which, we're going to use Matrix ColorSync 6RC. What I should mention about that is I'm actually going to put on the ends first. Where there's uh, heat, the color's going to sometimes flare. You can get it brighter. So to avoid that, I'm going to go and put it on the ends first. Once we've got on the ends, so I'm just going to put it from here down. Then I'm going to go back and put it onto the root. Hopefully we get that beautiful, nice, even coverage. So I'll go at the back, mix up our next color, and I'll come straight back and put that on. Someone walks in in your life and just light it up. Or more like screw it up, I guess. Wow, well, I guess this is the main reason why I'm writing this stuff. Roots are on, ends are on, or ends are on, and now we've done the roots. Process it for 15, 20 minutes. I like to actually leave it a little bit longer. I know the recommended processing time is 20. So the ends have probably been on, you know, seven to eight minutes longer than the roots. So we're just gonna make it another 15 minutes. Process that, I've just put a little bonnet on there. Just keeps a bit of heat in there. Helps with the processing. And then we're gonna rinse Susan, bring her back, start a haircut. See you a bit. And we're back. Hey, look at this. Incredible. I'm gonna start in the crown and find the length that we're gonna use for this haircut. Susan wants to, to have quite a considerable contrast 
in the layering in the interior length versus the ends. We can always go back and make it shorter, right? So now that I've got that, we're just going to take a vertical section. I'll spin her around just so you can see that sectioning and then you'll see the projection. So we take a section like this. You can see that it's a horizontal vertical section. Yeah. And then we're going to project this to increase away from the length because we want to retain the length on the ends. And then our cutting plane can be altered to how soft or how pronounced you want it to be. So this is all about keeping it soft. So I'm going to over direct the hair. There's my guideline. And then we'll let that go. And we can see how much that jumps up. That's actually really good. The further you project it away from the ends, the more weight and length you keep in the ends. And then the closer we come back down to like a traditional 90 degree layering or even lower in the graduation space, you start to take some of the weight out of the ends. What the over directing does is allows us to actually retain length. So you could do it here and over direct it like that. But what I find is it becomes a little bit too heavy and this is all about being soft. I can start to, just chin down for me, thank you darling, start to work uniform and follow my guideline. And once we get to the side, we just want to, the side of the head that is, we want to make sure we over direct it back to the middle because people, well, the people that I know don't have hair growing out of the neck. So if we don't over direct it, you're going to end up with a big hole down here. So now this is brought back within the head shape. You guys have probably heard me do that. I'm not going to do it out here. I'm actually going to bring it back so it's within the head shape here. Now we're going to repeat that on this side. On Susan's left hand side on the right. Then once we've done this side, we're going to bring it all together in the middle, cross check and add some texture. Making sure you stay within that head shape. Now we've done that, we're going to bring it all together. Sometimes when I do this technique, I actually grab a, a paddle brush because sometimes it's easier, especially as the hair starts to dry, it's easier to actually comb it or brush it up to that point. Sorry, it's easier to brush it than comb it up to that point. Now we're into the middle, we're going to cross check, should be good. Not much to cut there. And then we're going to very carefully point cut channels in the hair. You see that? You see those points? I'm going to over direct it a little bit further and we're going to knock that corner off. You'll see it gets really square and that's where the weight line is going to be. You can see here. So we're just going to make sure that we don't leave a weight line there. And again, a little bit of texture, some slicing, spin Susan around so we can do the same on both sides. What we do on the right, we must do on the left and vice versa. Let's spin around, we'll see what that's done. You can see that's really starting to create that nice short interior that we want. Don't worry about this weight line here because we're actually going to address that in the front. Now it's time to move on to our two front sections. We're going to take a little bit of our original guideline and bring that forward too. And we're going to use this to give us a guideline for the entire front of the haircut. So what Susan said to me is she wanted to make sure it wasn't too short in here. She didn't want a fringe or anything like that because um, those elements can sometimes be high maintenance and hard to manage. She needs to be able to get her hair back, but that doesn't mean we can't do the interior short. So by using increased layering, and this is now horizontal, we can actually control the amount of length that we keep or that we remove by doing it this way. Then so once we've got this, that'll allow us to have a guide throughout the entire front of the haircut that we then don't have to go looking for or we don't have to guess. It takes all the guessing out. You can see now that the length in the front hasn't been compromised. 
So this will still go back. The interior is shorter and we haven't touched any of this. So now you can take each side up section by section. So I'm just bringing this hair up on top of that middle section, making sure that I'm going here, I'm not going there, I'm not going there. We're over directing it, classic increase layering. Over directing to retain length in the front. I could have like really made that super angled and, and left more if I wanted to. But uh, I'm a good, good guess. So I think I've guessed right. Almost out of here. As you can see, there's no hair to cut there. So now we've got that nice short interior in here. Obviously there's limitations when you're using horizontal lines. You are gonna create weight lines and it's harder to control those using horizontal lines, which is why I'm gonna go back and do vertical like I did. But this is about making sure that we have the right length in the top and then we can take some of that weight out of the sides. Haven't done any texture in there yet because I'm gonna wait until I've done my vertical cross checking. So just put, pop your head forward darling. So you can see from the front there, the shape that it's created. Time to shape the front. I don't wanna shape it too short, we already discussed that. So we need to make sure we've got our two front, at the first two in the front sectioning already out. So we've got the right amount of hair. I'm projecting it horizontally. I'm starting with this section through the middle. Yeah. Make sure that we've got it all combed. Maybe just head up a little bit. Yep, perfect, thank you. Good. And then take that point off. We're gonna bring this up to that point. Probably won't be a lot to cut on the sides. So don't go chasing, looking for the hair if it's not there. It doesn't reach, it doesn't reach. The sides don't reach. Now I'm just gonna bring all that to the middle and I'm gonna again, as I did in the back, just gonna create some separation with some point cutting. That's giving us a nice guide to our length. You can see that. You guys have seen me do this before. Now we're taking a triangle section. We're gonna over direct this again. And you can see where we just cut that. We join the two points together. And that makes sure that we've connected now the top to the outside of that length around the face. So again, there was a weight line there. We just need to connect the two points together. So one of the things I love to do is to make sure that I have guidelines to know where I am. You can see, again, doesn't seem like much, but it actually is pretty important that we get it. You can see that there's a length there in the front and then you've got this little bump and take that out. And again, while the hair's there, I'm just gonna gently point cut that to make sure we've got some separation. And now it's time to do some texture on the rest of the haircut because our basic shape is there. The hair was starting to dry on me so I've just sprayed it with this with a water spray, sprayed it down a little bit and I want to show you guys the shape. We're going to use some Unbreak My Blonde. Why? Because it's a leave-in moisturiser, leave-in treatment. We did lighten the hair, obviously it's no longer blonde but we know it is under there and a Kelk and Dream. So first I'm going to apply some unbreak my blonde, about this much, mainly in through the ends. Like we don't want to go loading the, the, um, the scalp up with product. The ends didn't even need cutting, so I left them. I think that if you're going to do a textured shaggy look, um, if you go and cut the ends and they're really like strong and blunt, that can look a little bit odd because you've got contrasting texture. A girl can dream. Less is more with this. So I put it a lot in my palms and then I sort of take it away from my palms and just scrunch it in where I feel it needs to be. And obviously we're gonna diffuse the hair so we're going to loosen it back up again. And let's try it off.
I like to see how, how you move, it, move your own hair. How it sort of brings the shape out a bit. I know I'm a bit of a tucker. I just always think that one side should be off the face. That's why I keep, yeah, that's why I keep going like this. Because I just feel like, you know, just that way we can see you. And then as long as we get a little bit of height here, there you go. The higher the hair, the closer to God, right? Yep. Oh, I'm glad you trusted me. It's a big change. I love it. Not as big as mine, though. I love yours, too. The people decided it stayed blonde. Thanks for coming hang out with me today. Thank you. Looks really um, very Canberra winter, fiery, so hope your husband's ready for the new wife coming home. Yeah, Should be fun. True. Did you tell him? <laughs> yeah, he knew I was coming here. He knew there was going to be a big change. Oh, he knew he was coming here, but didn't know you were coming home as uh, a new woman. It looks great. Look how blue your eyes look. Actually, they look a little bit green. You have yeah. green eyes? They're actually blue, but they look green today. Yeah. I'm looking in the monitor. Sorry, I should look at the camera because otherwise it looks <laughs> like I'm this. Thanks so much for watching again, guys. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And hit the notification button because then when we upload new videos, you'll be the first to see them. Um, and please make sure you share this with someone that you think may like it. Sharing our skills is important. I'm not saying I know everything, but... If someone can learn just one little thing from um, someone else, it makes a big difference to them and their clients' experience in the salon. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, everyone. Until next time, bye. How come you don't do thumbs up?